CBS News Update. I'm Tom Fody. KCBS News Time, 1132. Malaysian Airlines Flight 370 vanishing one year ago while on its way from Kuala Lumpur to Beijing. And despite a number of searches for the missing jetliner, where the plane is and what happened to it remains a mystery this weekend. Australia's Prime Minister indicated that while the hunt for the plane will continue, it will most likely be scaled back. Meanwhile, there's a new report that the battery for the plane's black box locator beacon had expired a year before the aircraft vanished. For a look back, on the search effort so far. Dave Padilla spoke with aviation crisis consultant Ken Jenkins and the author of the book Resilience, Stories of Courage and Survival in Airline Disasters. How do relatives, how do family members deal with something where you can't have any resolution in terms of recovering a body? That's you know, certainly the biggest challenge for families right now. A year ago, this plane vanished. And we know two things for sure. The plane took off and it never landed where it was supposed to in Beijing. And that's all they know for sure. And barring any piece of aircraft, a life vest, a emergency response card, uh, many families are holding out hope that the aircraft will be found uh, simply because they don't have anything to look at. And at the one-year mark, it's, um, it's especially poignant because just a few months ago, the Malaysian government declared officially the aircraft an accident. But that emotional dilemma for the families was, I can't pronounce them dead because we don't know that they are. They, there's nothing to show that they are. And so many haven't gone down that route, even though the Malaysian government declared it an accident. How does one overcome this sense of hope that maybe someday their loved one will come walking through the door? The number one thing that I found, and, and I have research through the, in the book that you mentioned, is that people have a great need for information. They want to know everything that they need to know. And in this particular case, it, uh, Malaysia 370, the families feel like they haven't been receiving all of the information, just snippets or sanitized snippets of information. And so there's some distrust there, and that certainly harbors um, the process of being able to move forward because they feel so uh, left out of the, the loop in terms of communication. Well, you bring up a good point, and I was thinking that uh, some families uh, uh, may become obsessed with, with wanting to know every little thing, but there's, always an, there's also probably a, a residual impact, uh, right, uh, emotional impact on the family itself. Uh, couples break apart or family members, you know, have disagreements, and this, that, and the other. Sure, and we, we see that in not only mass casualty events, but in any kind of a traumatic event within a family where one person may handle it differently than another. Uh, families get stronger, families become weaker, some get married, some get divorced. I mean, there are a whole host of, of emotions depending on the situation, um, and certainly the case and here. Um, what's somewhat unique, though, with, with um, an aviation disaster, and we're seeing this to an extent with MH370, is that the families often bond together and create family advocacy groups. Uh, and one of the strongest family advocacy groups was, uh, or is, Flight 3407, which was the Continental Connection accident in Buffalo uh, several years ago. And that, that group of families lobbied Congress to change the number of hours um, pilots have to have coming into the job from 250 flight hours to 1,500 flight hours. And if you go all the way back to the, the mid, um, early 1990s, Dave, there were family advocacy groups from accidents that occurred in the late 80s and 90s that lobbied for Congress to pass legislation on how airlines should respond in the aftermath of a disaster, and not just the airline but other agencies as well. So many of these families work tirelessly to help the industry grow stronger from an event like a missing aircraft or a disaster where a plane actually crashes. That's aviation crisis consultant Ken Jenkins and the author of the book Resilience, Stories of Courage and Survival in Airline Disasters.